I became very aware of the fact that there hadn't been a Stabilmata commissioned or done by a contemporary composer for at least 50 years. I said, well, it's now time for a new Stabilmata because Stabilmata is actually timeless in terms of its drama and its fundamental meaning. When you look at the text and when you look at Aleppo in Syria, when you look at the refugees uh, crossing the Sahara, you realize that the, this power of the relationship of the, the family unit on one level and this, the unconditional love that the mother has for the child, which is also a symbol of the unconditional love that God has for us. John has such a vision uh, for the Genesis Foundation, such a vision for, for contemporary music and particularly uh, sacred music. Uh, so this whole project uh, has, has been in the Genesis for um, two, almost three years now. And to see it come to its sort of fulfillment, it, this is a kind of, this is a once in a lifetime experience that you get to perform such a major work uh, that is brand new. I mean, when I received the, the first movements that, that James wrote back in January, you know, coming through the post, opening them, you know, this was music, this is brand new music leaping off the page for the first time. I spent my time looking at it, working at it, and then in the rehearsal process to then hear the music, uh, with, first with the orchestra come to life and then with the choir come to life and then putting the whole thing together. It's just totally unique and, and just incredibly special. In the early days, before even a note was written, there was a lot of excitement amongst the singers, amongst the Genesis Foundation, uh, with John Szynski himself and Harry Christophers, about how um, the, 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 the whole project was impacting on a whole different range of musicians, younger composers, younger singers, and now the, uh, the grown-ups, uh, grown as it were, of, of, of the 16. delightful project and quite an unusual one uh, because it's not just the finished product which is the, the commission piece tonight but um, there's been a whole range of people involved in it not just the 16 but Genesis 16 and other composers um, John Szynski and the Genesis Foundation were keen to uh, explore the Stabat Mater in very different ways. So he commissioned uh, an Estonian composer, Tonu Korvitz, a Russian composer, Alisa Firsova, and an English composer, Matthew Martin, to write their own smaller versions of the Stabat Mater. Uh, and I was asked to mentor them. What was really almost shocking about the text linked to music in James's score is how brave he is about taking the text and not just producing an extraordinary piece of music, a spiritual, sacred piece of music. But that evening, when I listened to these moments of drama and silence, where you could almost hear uh, the crowds around the, uh, the cross when Christ was being crucified, you really sensed that you were witnessing not just a musical production, but you were witnessing something that was almost a, a dramatic event on a much more powerful level.